The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. It's a South Congress podcast, episode 90. My name is Cameron. I'm Tristan. I'm Megan. So Megan's back, guys. Um, And basically what happened was Megan, the first podcast she ever heard was her on a podcast last week. This is true. So she was immediately like, hey, did people like it? How did I sound? I need to do it again to fix the things I did wrong. I was like, no, you were good. Like it came across natural. So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Megan's back. Peanut, how did you feel about Megan's appearance on the podcast? It was cool. (laughs) I thought it was fine as well. I think that, um, kind of like the thing with Joe, um, we talked about how we didn't think it was fair that we were talking about being like allies to the queer community mm-hmm. and not having that voice as a part of our show. So I think that like we can't be like, hey, uh, pro black women and not have black women on the show. I think a lot of people do that. Um, and so it was kind of important to like have that voice on too. Why are you rolling your eyes? No, I'm not rolling my eyes. I'm just saying, like, but do people really care about that? Or I care about it. Oh, and okay. that's it's funny because mm-hmm. that's going to be a big point of conversation here okay. about what people care about versus what matters. Yeah. So I, yeah, we'll okay. talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, people. No, well, people at, have, at least with Twitterverse, people have told no people they, have they told don't me to shit. the side and have told me like, hey, um, we can have some black girls on the show. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh. oh, people. So nobody. Okay. I don't know. You are a hater. Because I, because you always say this. Apparently, there are people that they're upset because okay, so you know he has that uh that Goosebump show. Mm-hmm. Apparently, people pulled him to the side and said, "Hey, we don't really like it that Peanut always says goose me down, man. They don't need a fucking dick." I mean, people are going to critique your art. They know my at. I've never got a DM about it. This is true. Yep. So. Yep. Peanut, how was your week? Um, same as always, you know, I'm on Thanksgiving break. So right after the Sunday fun day, I'm heading home. Okay. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work out, uh, play video games and probably be nasty. More than likely. I'm gonna try my best to be nasty. I don't give a fuck. I'm on break. I'm allowed to, right? Meg, how was your week? Same old, same old. Okay. Bunch of nursing bull****. Um, please edit that out because I don't know if anyone from school watches. We'll hit the button. Thank you. Um, I was heavy hot, on the bleep button last week for somebody. Yes. Who? You, you, did you watch the video? No. Did you watch the video? Yes. How many times did I bleep him? It was out? you. It was a lot. Why? Like for a lot, what? A lot. I I, I should have done it seven times. I did it six times. For what? what you I were I talking see? crazy. Everybody likes it though. No, everybody I doesn't like, like it. it. See, Meg likes it. Everybody doesn't like it. Everybody does like. It. Well, they so, don't tell me, so I don't care. But no, they 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 don't tell you because it's not. So so why don't you forward it to me then? Why would I? So I can be like, what is hey, the what's point your of issue? you knowing what you shouldn't say? Yes. So he well, can then, then what's the, the them yes? Personally. So then what's no, the point of them critiquing me again, if they're going to go to you? A bigger point is mm-hmm. you don't censoring the talent mm-hmm. is the producer's job. It's not the audience's job. That's a great segue. Then no, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now we're going to get there. <laughs> So my week, um, I always kind of start where we literally leave off, right? Mm-hmm. So everybody except Peanut, because Peanut had things to do. We all like left the show last week and immediately went to the domain and t- tore that motherfucker up. I did not. <laughs> oh my god! But I was there to oh. witness it. Oh, we yeah, it was it was heavy. I had nothing to do. I just don't want to be a part of that. One thing that I want to nope. say. When you're transparent, mm-hmm. you can do what you want to do. This is true. You just have to be transparent. You can't name two women who say I lied to them. You can name one, but you can't name two. This is true. So can we say manipulate? No. I think um, I think that's more. You can say words, but no, it's not manipulation if you're honest. You're only I mean, honest I mean, to honest, one person, honest, though. honest people can well, no, still no, be no. manipulators. I'm only dishonest that to one person. It, it, there's a difference, but <laughs> I mean, it's like they say: the lighter the eyes, the bigger the lies. I, I don't care who says that, but um, we had a very fun Sunday to the point where 
<laughs> I almost tapped out Monday, dog. I was sitting <laughs> in my office like, yo, I don't really need this shit. Um, but we powered through and we mm-hmm. got through the week. Yeah. Um, so this gets us into the first topic. Um, it, it's weird. The last month, we've talked more about pro wrestling than we ever planned on talking. There, there's all kinds of bells and whistles in his house and shit. Oh, if somebody like that touches the washer? The, it was. It sounded um, like London Bridge is falling down. It's pretty impressive. I think it's that too. Or like um, the remix. So I want to hear that yeah, Tory Lane shit before we, we get out of here. We never intended on talking about pro wrestling on this show. Mm-hmm. Literally, this is very important though. This was our escape from me talking about pro wrestling. Yeah. No, this, like, is this is very important yeah. to talk about. So, Because this has everything to do with you. I, I have to set the story up. Yeah. So I work for the Pro Wrestling Torch. I do audio. Shout out Wade Keller. Yeah, I do Bruce audio. Mitchell, everybody. I do some video. I get Except to Trav, go to. You. I'm just kidding. I, I get to go to um stuff with press passes. So and you know he it, thinks he's cool. No, but that's literally my other job. He's cool to incels, but. So. Wade Keller mm-hmm. and Bruce Mitchell. Yeah. Do not have the best relationship with Jim Cornette. Who is Jim Cornette? If you're somebody who doesn't like watch a lot of wrestling, he was a wrestling promoter for the last 30 years. That's that's the way to put it, right? Mm-hmm. And his tennis racket. That's pretty sweet. Jim Cornette has wished evil on Wade Keller and Bruce Mitchell. What do I mean by wishing evil on them? Hey, um, I hope that your mother dies. Oh, wow. Hey, um, I hope somebody fucks you to death. <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst way to die. Okay. Unless it's rape. And then I don't support that at all. So, okay. so, so and oh, here's shit. where it's important. I got a right? visual. That's funny. We're people of color, the three uh, of us, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody said that to us, even if we don't react, mm-hmm. somebody around us, a brother, a cousin, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, is going to react to that, right? Mm-hmm. Mexicans will laugh at it. White people are different. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said those things and it was never hands. It was never hands. It was never guns. It was just. I feel like he's never been checked before. Here's what we're getting to. Yeah. So apparently my man Bruce, after Jim Cornette talked all that shit, they shared an elevator Mm -hmm. after that. And you know what Jim Cornette did on that elevator? What? Nothing. Nothing. Looked straight ahead, hit his button, and got off. Right? Because Why did Bruce Mitchell fuck him up? Bruce Mitchell not built like that. Like Solange. Don't matter. It's Jim Cornette. Well, no, because he's... When I say not built like that, he's a peaceful dude. Like, he speaks truth to power, but when it comes down to it, he's like, yo, we ain't got to fight. Like, I'm I'm grown, you grown. I'm peaceful, but I still slap the shit out of somebody. Again, Mm -hmm. we're, we're building to that point. So, you know, it was all well and good, whatever. He said what he said. So, he was working for this wrestling company, the NWA. They just came back with a television show. And he gets on the show. And he's talking about this guy, Trevor Murdoch. Peanut and I have a special relationship with Trevor Mm -hmm. Murdoch because we're from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. He was tag team champions with this guy, Lance Cade, who's who's from San Antonio and was trained there. R.I.P. Cade. We're at a bar one night. Trist. We're at Trist. Yeah. The bar was called Trist. R.I.P. So Trist. You know the fucking vibes. R.I.P. Trist. We're in there and I see Lance Cade. I'm like, oh shit, that's Lance Cade. And I'm like, hey, what's nice up? guy. It's like, hey, yo, we, we're fans. He was like, oh, cool, man. He Peanut's shook my dumbass. Hand. He shook my hand. Yeah. Peanut's dumbass was like, yo, where's Murdoch? And he was like, dog, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. He goes, uh, he's at home with his family. I said, yeah. you know what? Good. He needs to fucking stay there. You need to go solo. <laughs> yeah. So R.I.P. to Lance Cade. I he bought passed him a drink. away. Yeah, he did. I bought he him passed a drink. away a few years after that, right? Yeah. And this was like back in like oh six. Natural cr- causes at twenty nine. First of all, let let that man die. <laughs> let him rest, rest in peace. He is resting in peace, but still, I I, I feel that's, like that's not important to our conversation right now. If you want to have the PED conversation, we can have that later. Yeah. Okay. So Trevor Murdoch is wrestling last week on a show, and Jim Cornette says this, Megan. Mm-hmm. He says. Let me tell you how tough Trevor Murdoch is. He's so tough. You he could ride a motor scooter Mm -mm. across Ethiopia with a bucket of fried chicken strapped to his back. Right. Okay. So to me, that's racist. Um 
I took it to the barber shop. I went to the barber shop on Friday. I said, yo, let me tell you a joke. And I told the joke. And it was dead air. And I said, hey, was that racist? They were like, yeah, Cam. And I was like, oh, okay, just making sure. And then I told them the story. So he tells this joke on the show. And then I screen cap it. Like I take a short video, a little 15 second video. And I'm like, yo, I'm not watching NWA Power again. Mm-hmm. And Power. And all of a sudden it gets a retweet. Then another retweet. Then 100 retweets. Then 500 retweets. Then 1,000 retweets. Mm -hmm. Then 4,000 retweets. Mm -hmm. Then it's on Variety. Then it's on TMZ. Uproxx. Then it's on Uproxx. Then it's on Yahoo. It's going crazy, right? His. A day later. Cam, right here. A day later, Jim Cornette resigns from NWA. Apparently, so I listened to his show on Friday. Just the the first 15 minutes. Let's let's not go there yet. Okay. Right? So... Everybody sees it. Everybody's mm-hmm. commenting on it. Mm-hmm. Dave Lagana, who produces the show, puts out a tweet and says, hey, um, apparently some people were offended with this episode and we pulled it and we're going to fix it. So the episode comes back the next day um, with that edited out. Then Jim Cornette apparently resigns the next morning. Then Jim Cornette tweets out, hey, whatever idiots had a problem with my joke, I'm going to address that on Friday. Mm-hmm. I listened to it. So, yeah, let's get all the information out. Mm-hmm. Tell me what he said on Friday. The, basically, to summarize it up, he said that it wasn't a racist joke. That mm-hmm. was not his, his intent. He said for those that always automatically connect black people and fried chicken like they have other issues. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said he meant it as a starving joke. He meant it like in Starving Marvin from South Park because Mm -hmm. he loved the Starving Marvin character. And he also mentioned that he's made that joke 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's been told on USA and other countless other channels. Never had an issue. And I guess his thing was like, why is it an issue today? And basically said that there's some people out there who like to fake be offended and now it's an issue. And he said he didn't necessarily, I guess, like, I guess he resigned, but not formally. He basically told that Dave Lagani or whatever. He said, you know what? I'm not going to apologize for something that I'm not sorry for. You know what? Fuck you. Fuck off. And hung up the phone. And that was that. So I guess that was his way of resigning. Um, but basically to him, he's just saying, like, you know, hey, like, if you saw it as this way, maybe you need to take a look at yourself. Mm-hmm. Is what is kind of pretty much to summarize is how he is how he said it. So before I say things. Mm-hmm. Megan, um, do you have anything to say? Again, you not coming from the world of pro wrestling. No, I know you, shit about wrestling. You not being 30 plus years old. Also true. Taking this from your age, from your perspective, what are your thoughts just on that situation and what we said? Uh, I think it's a terrible joke for starters. Okay. It's not funny. Okay. And that if you're going to be racist, at least kind of sort of be funny, like make me giggle and then want to punch you in the fucking face. Okay. But that was just terrible. And it was racist today and it was racist 30 years ago or on USA Today or wherever it's been said. Mm. I think that he should probably throw that joke out the window. And if people are offended, you probably shouldn't call them idiots because I don't think that helps your case or tell your boss to fuck off. But former boss, yeah, former boss. I don't know. I just. It's wild to hear that shit. Yeah. And to, and, okay. And it's crazy because he also deflected it back to Dave Lagani and said, hey, this was a tape show. Mm-hmm. You watched the whole thing. And you still aired it. And how are you going to say, oh, like this just happened to slip by? Like there's that. We have editors. We have this. We have producers. Like if it was bad, if you really thought it was bad, like his thing was like, look, if it came off as racist, look, I'm sorry. But that wasn't my intent. Like, you know, my intent was this. I was making a starving joke. And basically his thing was like, you know, I'm not like his, his whole thing was basically like, you know, there's this whole culture thing where everybody apologized for every little fucking thing. And his mm-hmm. thing was like, I'm not about to get in that bullshit. Like, you know, I'm not going to apologize for every little fucking thing mm-hmm. because a couple of people want to pretend to be offended kind of thing. That, yeah. that was pretty much what he said. And his thing, his whole thing, like I said, he deflected back to Lagania and said, like, you know what? Like, if... This is a tape show. You should, if you thought it was a problem, you should have edited it right then and there, and this wouldn't be an issue. 
So my question is, why didn't he make a joke about the starving kids in America? <laughs> so, okay. So let me. He referenced Live Aid when he talked about it 30 years ago when he first made the joke. Let me see if I can bring this all home, right? Okay. I explained to you mm -hmm. that he's threatened people I value, right? Mm -hmm. And you know me. You've been around me. Like, I don't really get down like that. Like, if you don't fuck with people I fuck with, we're really not cool. Yeah. Like on some, and it's not even mm -hmm. like no disrespect. It's just like, I look crazy out here being cool with you. Yeah, that's true. I look crazy out here being friends with you. So it's been fuck Jim Cornette. Number one, right? Okay. Number two, I agree with Jim Cornette in that. And I tweeted after, like 10 minutes after I tweeted that video out, I said, look, the problem is not Jim Cornette being a racist. The problem is... He said that, and it got through every check and balance that they have. That's the issue. Yeah. Because, and Megan, you don't know Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette has been telling that joke, like he said, for 30 years. Jim Cornette has said terrible things about women wrestlers. Jim Cornette has said terrible things about gay wrestlers. To where, like, NWA is like his fifth stop. He's been fired from every wrestling company he's ever worked for because... Of things like this. Mm -hmm. He was fired from MLW for saying that Sonny Kiss, um, a gay wrestler, like a drag queen. Like. He's basically the Rush Limbaugh of wrestling. So this is not new. You know what I'm saying? So that's number one. But number two, like when you hire, like think about At it. At least comment wise, not political. Peanut mm -hmm. is my best friend, right? Right. I'm number two, but it's fine. We literally had a conversation about. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. We literally had a conversation mm -hmm. before we turned the button on about how I edited him out six times on the last episode mm -hmm. because I value him and don't want our entertainment to mess up his future. I did that, mm -hmm. right? So when you hire Jim Cornette, you know you're getting a racist. You know you're getting a sexist. You know you're getting somebody who's going to push the boundaries. It's your crazy. job as a producer to ensure that if that's somebody you want, you can maintain that talent. Right. Right? Like, like that's just like Charles Barkley. We love Charles Barkley on Inside the NBA, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think everything he says makes it to TV. No. He told a joke uh, last week that somehow made it. No, not last week. It was an old joke, but it, it was on Twitter. He said, why don't you buy women watches? Anybody knows? Mm -mm. Because there's a clock on the stove. The that's kind of funny. It's clever, right? Yeah. But there's a reason he doesn't say things like that every week, right? right. So I Spe agree with Jim Cornette mm -hmm. that Dave Lagana is more responsible for what happened than Jim yeah, Cornette Yeah, absolutely. Is, right? Absolutely, yeah. However, let's it's, talk about it. It's still Jim Cornette. <laughs> Let me tell you how racist wrestling is. It's very, very racist. Me, Cameron Hawkins, right? Mm -hmm. With probably... And, and I can only talk about the story like the story unfolded. I probably have more Twitter followers than anybody who has AEW in their profile, who doesn't work for AEW, right? Yeah. I probably have a bigger reach than them social media wise. Mm -hmm. I work for two wrestling companies. Me, with my name in the video, tweeted out that video. And said, I'm not watching this show anymore because that was racist. How did the story turn into AEW fans conspired against me to get me fired? Like the idea. That's crazy that he said that. And I was like, huh? Because here's the thing. Hmm. Oh, I told that joke 30 years ago. Why is it a problem now? Yeah. Nigga. That's literally why it's a problem now. Like you gotta, like, you gotta understand too, because like, um. We we're talking about like a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. I was actually talking about uh, like in my health class. I explained racism, discrimination, mm -hmm. and I told him I go, look, you gotta understand. There was a show that you, that actually aired on TV called All in the Family, most racist fucking television show you could ever think of. Yeah, and I, I go, I'm not gonna show any clips. I go, if you want to look at the clips, you YouTube mm -hmm. it. You'll see what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay, I go, but the the show was literally based on 
the dad being a racist bigot, mm-hmm. the um, the daughter and, you know, I guess the son-in-law, the boyfriend being like, you know. Super progressive. Um, yeah, super progressive, yeah. like, you know, and, you know, the, the dude's unemployed. The wife, you know, she was like, you know, your typical housewife. She mm-hmm. waited hand on foot on on him kind of thing. Or go, she. Yeah. That's what, but, and I, I'm telling I, and I told the kids, I go, you got to understand, that was the number one show in America for mm-hmm. the longest time. And it, they said some of the most racist, wild shit ever said and it aired on tv like nothing yeah and and now i think i think it's uh abc's talking about maybe doing a um a, a remake a reboot, bring, yeah. for, a reboot of that shit that in yeah. a uh good times so which so is like fucking crazy again, think about what i'm saying though yeah like a literal i'm a literal black person mm-hmm. i'm not like an anime avi yeah it's my picture on twitter Oh, like that one guy was funny. Like, it's me. Mm -hmm. So I literally voice that I have a problem. If you go through the thread, it's black people explaining to white people what the issue is. Yeah. And that's always the case. Anytime this happens. And that's another thing he said. And he he addressed that. He said, you know, a lot of people were like, well, did you have to say fried chicken? His thing was like, no, it it wouldn't sound funny if I were to say, oh, if he had um, sushi strapped to his back. So so it's funny because you said fried chicken. Because people could relate to it. Because they knew what you were saying. Because black people see, like it's it. not. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and he said that so on, the, on the show. That. Think about that. And it's just like you said. Mm-hmm. All in the family was a thing. Like it wasn't. I said this, and and that's what people were saying. He said it in 1995. Why wouldn't you were offended in 1995, nigga? I was nine. Like I didn't have a place to voice my opinion. I didn't have the agency to see the problem when I was nine. We didn't know what was happening. Like, yeah. I'm 33. And so even some black people were like, yo, you being so sensitive, you got to accept the joke. Nigga, just because you can roll over for the white man doesn't mean I have to. Like, I'm not here to get along. And I think that drives people crazy. And not, not just me, but people like me. Like, I don't need white approval. Yeah. Never needed it. I need, dog, it's fine. It's oh. just, it just goes black. Okay. <laughs> I need white people to like, you know, Sign off on my t- uh, timesheet, and that's dope. But I don't need like to get along with anybody and forsake the things that I find valuable. Like right. for what? That shit don't matter. So that back to the specifics of that, right? Mm-hmm. Somehow the story became other white people conspired to get me fired from this job, and they really ran with that shit. And that's so crazy to me because again. I didn't conspire for him to lose his job. What I specifically said was, this is why wrestling and everything else, you need people of color and women in positions of power. Because I I swear to you, I swear to you, if a black person, and not like, you know, you kind of have to say it too, not a conservative black person, because you have to be specific. Mm -hmm. If a liberal black person was on that managerial staff and you ran that show by them, there's no way he gets to tell a joke about Ethiopia and fried chicken. True. Tell me how much money you think Jim Cornette has donated to Ethiopia. Zero dollars. And the big thing about it is like... He's probably never been there. Um, probably. Well, maybe for a mission trip. White people love to go there for mission trips. He's not religious at all. Let's say it wasn't a racist (laughs) joke, right? Yeah. Let's say it's not racist. It's like you said, a starvation joke, yeah. But it's a starvation joke. How many people died from the famine in the 90s in Ethiopia? A lot. 1.2 million. And he, he was very blunt and he was very, he gets in over. It was a starvation's joke. Starvation is funny. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking terrible. Tell me what starvation other country not- he would make fun of where a million people died. Just give me one. It ain't one with white people in it. Would he, would he make a Holocaust joke like that? Nope. Nah, probably Fuck not. no. And you shouldn't. But you shouldn't make fun of, like, you don't fuck with Ethiopians. Somebody in that thread was like, yo, um, I didn't see any Ethiopians having prob- a problem with this. Nigga, you don't know any Ethiopians. <laughs> I know a couple Ethiopians. Me too. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, I, I even talked about he it on- He makes a trail of tear jokes, and I'm finding him myself. I talked about it on Wednesday. Like, it was a culture shock to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, DK first. But really, when we got to college, oh yeah, like yeah, just being around Nigerians because of all the bullshit that I heard about Nigeria growing up, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, they're they're really just like us, like literally just like us. That was when I was 17. Jim Cornette is like 59. True. You're not a grown man at 59, and and 
I know you love South Park, Peanut. I know you love South Park. Oh, I do. I love it. The when somebody says the joke was funny on South Park, nigga, Eric Cartman told the joke. It came from literally the person that they put to say the worst things to show how terrible they are. Mm-hmm. So They're very smart. South Park is very smart like that. To bring it all home, I never asked for Jim Cornette to lose his job. However, when Jim Cornette can get on his podcast and say, oh, um, I'm not sorry for what I said. And it was only a few people who had a problem. I don't understand how they did. Boy, fuck you. And, and everybody you fuck with. And apparently what he was also saying, like, towards the end of that segment, because I only listened to the part we talked about. Other than that, I was like, I don't give a fuck what he has to say. But apparently what he was saying was that he's been getting, like, he got, I think, triple the Patreon donors off oh, the shit. I'm sure. Like, he, he because, got, like, he's been se- he's been selling a shit ton of merchandise, and he's been getting a lot of Patreon. So he's like, thing. fuck it. Because there's racist a sh- support racist. There's a yeah. strong portion of the pro wrestling audience uh-huh. that thinks people are too sensitive. Mm-hmm. That thinks that people need to understand a joke. That thinks that people um, find things to be offended about and lash out. They all look like the same person. They wear um, an American flag hat and Oakleys in their Twitter profile. And they drink Mountain Dew. And I don't. Yeah. And and that's oh, like. And it's like. Look. <laughs> and and their name is Kyle Punch and Drywall. And this is my biggest thing. Racists don't lose. No. You know. Like, people say, like, if you don't like it, change the channel. I shouldn't have to avoid racism. <laughs> it should not exist. I shouldn't have to avoid sexism. It should not exist. Booker T, Mark Henry, I'm waiting for you guys to create your own wrestling alliance. Mark Henry, funny enough, mm-hmm. came out and said how hurt he was at what Jim Cornette said. You know what people did to Mark Henry? What? They all of a sudden didn't fuck with him no more. It's funny. Mm-hmm. White men... Seem to like. What are you looking at? Stop looking at it. Oh, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking when I talk. It isn't. Okay, never mind. It's normal. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> White men mm-hmm. who feel a certain way, whenever there's like a racial discussion, they point to ex black wrestler that agrees with them and say, See, he felt this way. Why don't you feel this way? Yeah, sounds about right. Like, you know, black people can't have individual thought. But now that Mark <laughs> Henry is like, Yo, that shit was racist as hell, yeah. they're not rocking with him like that. Almost like they don't actually value his opinion. They value his color when it matters to them. I've talked enough about Jim Cornette. Fuck Jim Cornette. I'll still rock with Wendy's, though. <laughs> even, even though, if Jim Cornette, if you ever listen to this, um, we can set up a meeting between you and Cameron, and Cameron can explain to you no, at, we can't. at Wendy's no, we can't. about why this is wrong. Because I just want to have that's, Wendy's. That's the, okay, that's the biggest thing, Wendy's, though. Like, that's it. I don't see you punch him in the face. I'll I don't buy find, you Wendy's if no, that's what you want. I don't find the value. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah, I don't find value in sharing space with racists. True. Um, like at all. It's not because a lot of people do this whenever they have like a, a difference of opinion with somebody politically or racially. They get together on he's a podcast. He's only okay when he talks shit about Vince Rousseau. Yeah, fuck him. But yeah. they, they do this thing where, like, yeah, we have a difference of opinion. Let's get together and talk about it. And then we'll get a bunch of views on our shows and platform. Fuck you. No. Because Vince Russo sucks out loud, that's too. The thing. I already didn't fuck with him. Like, it was already yeah. on site. But now it's like... I used to fuck with Jim Cornette, but now we do this shit. like, no. No, it's crazy. Because you don't... Again, when people say... Why I'm, not, I'm, not, you? I'm not deep yeah. in wrestling like that. Now I see this shit, I'm like, uh... But when they say, why weren't you mad about something 10, 15, 20 years ago? Because I've grown and they haven't. That's why. We're also fucking children back then. I was a fucking baby. How many mad about some shit in 1995? I was fucking just not coming out the vag in 1995. I just wanted to watch Swamp Thing. In 95, I think I played my first basketball game. Like, let's, actual yeah. legit basketball game. Let's stick to race. Mm-hmm. Race baiters, the yeah. three of us, right? Okay. So Colin Kaepernick talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. They're still having a discussion on ESPN's first take. They invite Terrell Owens on. <laughs> Terrell Owens tells Stephen A. Smith that hey, Max Kellerman has been way blacker than you on this Colin Kaepernick story, to which Stephen A. automatically takes offense. Mm-hmm. Now, Peanut, you're not black. No, but. You're around me enough, and you're in the group chat enough, and I know Megan can attest to it. One of the worst th- feelings you can have as a black person is for you to be next to a white person and for somebody to say they're blacker than you. 
Oh, dear God. It is one of the worst feelings in the entire world. That's like worse than a nut shot. It's so bad. Yeah. Because you can't just sure. you can't just jump up and down and fix it. No, you can't. Because <laughs> you automatically start to question everything. Everything about yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything about your relationships, how people see you. Now, here's what I'll say. And, and basically, if you don't know, mm -hmm. Max Kellerman has been very concrete in the idea that Colin Kaepernick is blackballed because of race. And the fact that we're not talking about that is a disservice to our own intelligence. It's kind of been his stance, right? Stephen A. Smith, his stance has been more Colin Kaepernick um, should be doing more to abide by the rules that the NFL has set for him if he wants to work. Of course, Stephen A. is going to say that. He's going to have monster contract. Thank you. So here's the thing you see as a grown black man. Mm -hmm. Max Kellerman is right. He's on the right side of history yep. of Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. I understand 100% why Stephen A. Smith and other black people at ESPN are saying what they are saying. Because they've had to play by the rules. And as soon as they say something that goes against the rules of the company, they feel that they are at risk of losing standing, losing their jobs, losing power. I get it. And I know they know I get it. I don't think that Stephen A, I'm sorry, I don't think that Max is going against Stephen A on purpose. I don't think Stephen A thinks Max Kellerman is wrong. But I just think they both know. As a white man. He can say that shit. Thank you. And I <laughs> yeah. tried to explain this to people. As a white man, you are able to speak about racism without the vitriol that will face a black man. You right. just are. You're, Which is why... If we can bring it all back together, which is why if white people just listen to black people, we'd be way further in race relations. But white people don't want to give up that power. White people, black people white. don't want to lose a little bit of power that they've got. Yeah, I 100 percent understand. I, I also think it's just crazy how everybody criticizes Kaepernick about changing location and having his own receivers. You know, it, he it's, did all the right things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you know, I was talking about my, with my coworker, and he was like, "Yeah." He goes, "He go," and you know, he made a good point. He goes, "He goes, uh, you know, the the NFL was on that bullshit. What they were gonna do? They're gonna give him the worst receivers. They were gonna run some bullshit ass routes and make Kaepernick look bad. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, let Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. He chose own receivers. He chose own site. So at at least, like, you know, hey, you know, like we said, can say we tried when we didn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and at least, like, you know, like if you go by the NFL standards. The NFL doesn't say, okay, hey, here's some bullshit. Shut up. You know, they, weren't, they didn't take that serious. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it, Kaepernick was smart to do that. And for now the ESPN analysts are saying, like, well, um, it, it, it's not that. It's just that the reason why no one's calling him because of accuracy. No, you know what? You, you can coach accuracy. People can get accurate. You can't coach arm strength. Yeah, arm talent, you can't coach. Yeah, you can't coach. You either got it or you don't. But, uh, again, you got to understand. There's, uh, if accuracy was, was such a, uh, a big factor, okay, Nathan Peterman, Sam Darnold, and Colt McCoy would never start a, a game in the NFL. I love never. you, Colt. He's right. Yes, I love Colt. But again, in the NFL, accuracy from from the uh, from from college did not translate to the NFL. Mm. Even though in college he was accurate as fuck. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's it's a bullshit statement. Like you know they're just finding reasons to not sign Colin Kaepernick. And everybody who's rocking with this thing saying, like, you know, oh, like, you know, how dare he do this? No, you know, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, you don't understand. You're not in this position where everybody is against you. Like, you mentioned earlier, he threw 55 yards off his back foot. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of guys currently that are starting right now that can do that. That guy right there, can I do that right now? Who just, <laughs> he just missed it? Yeah, <laughs> he just threw the ball. Yeah, he can't, he, he can't do it. Yeah. Mitch Trubisky can't do that. Oh, Mitch Trubisky absolutely is not as good. He's as horrible. Kaepernick. Like he's horrible. Even, you just <laughs> there you go. You literally That's what I'm saying. He's horrible. As we say it, you're, you're telling me Kaepernick's not better than that? Yeah. No. Get out of here with that Meg, shit, man. Anything you want to contribute right there? No, I think we covered all the bases. Okay. So to bring it all home, we can't tell. We can't question black people's blackness. True. We can call you a house nigga. We can call you a sellout. We can call you an Uncle Tom. We can call you a coon. All those things. Are questioning your blackness. No, 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 no. All that is left. No, no, no. But no, here's the thing. Though. All 
that is asserting your blackness. <laughs> it's calling you a sellout and a traitor. But we you, we don't talk we don't call racist white people coons. You feel me? Like we're saying you're black. You being black is the basis of the issue that we have with the things that you're doing. It don't make you less black. Listen, if you question somebody's blackness, that's like saying they won't get pulled over for the same shit you'll get pulled over for. That's like saying they can walk into a bank and not get the loan that you're also not getting. Oh, like he's gonna get the loan, but I, I understand. Well, Stephen A. Smith is say. rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's gonna get the in loan in general. Like ten million a year, we he'll can't get that loan. He'll that get whatever he needs. To black people, I think. Mm-hmm. Like I understand. Where, what it's based from? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, well, I don't know. Hold is, on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no you got it. Now I'll say, you know, the whole thing with that, um, Oprah definitely did walk into a store in Europe and she got thrown the fuck out. That is true. You see what I'm saying? And you know, you know the true. funny thing was the guy who owns that place actually went to uh, uh, high school with my mom. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> it's but crazy. Like, that's the thing. Like, it doesn't, you being a terrible black mm-hmm. person doesn't erase your blackness. You still black. Mm-hmm. You still a nigga. I remember. It's funny um, when I talk about meeting Nigerians. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my good friends that I went to college with, his brother is a running back for TCU now. It's a fucking mm. monster, right? Mm-hmm. And I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I remember we had a conversation in college about how um, if we got pulled over, uh, the cops would say something to me. And I looked at him. I was like, dog, look at you. Like, you think they're going to immediately suspect that you're a, a Nigerian immigrant here on a visa? Like, that, that's what you think is going to happen? Like, no, you going to be a nigga like I'm a nigga. A darker nigga at that. I remember he was one that also said, what's a do-rag? <laughs> he said it in that same tone, too. Yep. He sounded just like Alton from Real World. I don't know if you are I that. do know who Alton <laughs> from Real World dude, is. I just, I just really like Irulan. She's like... She's like my heart, dude. Yeah, that's exactly how we talk. I remember <laughs> him, man. Hey, that's, that's, man that's, some wild, that's some wild no, time. Yeah, that was, that was like people. something yeah, to, to figure out. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've said a lot of bad things to black people about them personally, but I've never questioned their blackness because they can't erase that. Unless you're Sammy Sosa. I've questioned a lot of oh. Mexican people's Mexicanness. I really have. That, I mean, that's on you. I can't. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I and and I let them know, hey, you know. Yeah. So, can we can we have some fun? Because I feel like yes, this has of been course. super serious. Yeah, of course. We're talking about Kanye and Joel Olstein. Mm. A fucking joke. So idiots. <laughs> People that follow him, idiots. A fucking. Kanye joke. tweeted out that he wanted to go to Joel Olstein's church, mm-hmm. and then he went. Mm-hmm. Um, of course. You did not do your journalistic requirement because you know somebody who was there. You I was should have gotten us to that show. You should have gotten us a first-hand account. That is. True. That was your job. I did. I have a friend that. Wait, you got us a first-hand account? Or you uh, didn't. Just, just what were they posted on the stories? Yeah, that was tell me it. the information that you got about their experience. And she listens to the show. And baby, I love you. You're great. Um, tell me. <laughs> I'm questioning you right now. Wow. Tell not you. Not you, you. Yeah. No, I know. I'm questioning said person. Tell me what you gathered from her experience. A lot of lost souls. <laughs> well, tell, lost. Man, talk about it. Talk about it. I mean, it, it was just like. It was just like any other Sunday, but obviously there's going to be more people there, big lines, because now you have Kanye there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's writing that bullshit because, you know, the the minute you turn to God, you're obviously an automatically a great person, which I think is the crock of shit. You know, with that. You've you've taken some issue with that the last month or two. Yes. and 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 here's my thing. I will never back from that stance. I never will. Like, if you're going to be about it, okay, that's fine. But don't do it. Because shit's not going right for you. I have a question. Yeah. Is Kanye the greatest artist that God's ever created? No. He's the greatest con artist that God ever created. He's a con artist. Who do you think is the greatest artist that God created? Michael Jackson. Okay. Okay. I mean, God did create everybody, so okay. Yeah. Michael Jackson. (laughs) I had to to gather myself. I don't have have one, but it's definitely not Kanye in my top three. If it Mm -mm. was, I mean, (laughs) we can only talk about our lives. I'd say Prince. I'd say Prince is the greatest artist he's created. Um, I can see that, yeah. I mean, I saw Michael above him, I but I'll, a, I'll, I'll, I guess, yeah, because yeah, Prince, because Prince can sing and he can play instruments. Yeah. Who would I Michael say is a woman? Sing. Huh? Who would I say is a woman? Well, uh, Michael Jackson. Who, no, no, and who's the one that just died? Um, Stop it. The one that just died about a year or two ago. Um, is she a singer? Or yeah, no? singer. Uh, Aretha Franklin. Aretha. Mm-hmm. I'd say no, Whitney's up there. Pretty good. Whitney had all the goddamn talent in the world. She would just fucking pop by. I'm like art, art. I like Frances McDormand a lot. She's a good actress. Um, 
I don't know, Cicely Tyson. Who who was the one that, that uh used to do like that art in New York? He died early from like Banksy? Early... No, 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 no. Oh, uh Basquiat. Yes. He's up there. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. That that, yeah. that art's fucking dope. Yeah. Okay. And this is very expensive so, to so buy. So none of them are Kanye, is what we're No, no. <laughs> no. Somebody who loves Kanye. For him totally to say, Kanye. you know, okay. my arrogance, but God fuck out of here, Kanye. It's closed Suck on my Sunday, dick. the hardest record ever made. Absolutely fucking not. If you nope. had to say like the hardest record, not the best song, but the hardest record, just throw a song out. The hardest record. These are hard questions, Cam. Yeah, that's the point. Mm. Like record, you mean like album or record? Just song. What's the hardest oh, song. song you can oh, make song. up offhand? Uh, there's like a bunch of Wu Tang songs I could think of, but true. Uh, but you want the flock of hard in the paint is way up there. Nuck if you buck is way up Nuck there. Nuck if you buck is definitely cut, number one. It's cut, a classic. Cut, that's uh, it'll cut, never, hard record. It'll Cutty never Buddy die. by Trillville's up there. Some cut is harder. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard. Get on my level is hard. The um, dip, Dipset anthem. Dips, dips and anthem is true. fucking hard. I definitely hard. that shit a few times. That was no, dope. Right? <laughs> the There's going to be a bleep right yeah. there. No, that's no, a hard there's, no, there's no bleep for um, that. What else is that's like dope. super hard? Um, DMX, what these bitches want is hard. What these money, want, money cash hoes. Nigga. Money cash hoes is hard as shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big Pimpin' is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, International Players Anthem. Classic. Hard. Yeah. Um, pocket Full of Stones. Pocket Full of Stones is fucking hard. The DJ Screw was a June... Uh, June twenty seventh. Yes. Fucking hard. Yes. Um shout out Will Jones. So we just said Kanye. None of Kanye songs. Mm-mm. You know, Chief Keef Finito is so fucking hard. That oh is my also God. never it's gonna a hard die. fucking also song. So no, die. but Kanye. That story lanes, yeah. yes, sir, is pretty dope. Okay, relax. No. We're going but, but, a little far but, now. Pretty Ricky, your body is fucking hard. That yeah. is hard. Yeah. That is Even though hard. you got okay. mad, I played for the twenty first birthday. Okay. And so all the hoes we all say, okay. Do strip clubs promote sex trafficking? He might have a point. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a valid point in like, that. MGM yeah. shut down because, well, okay. because of that. I mean, to, pro- to Even say something a great idea. sex trafficking, you have to want to sex traffic. Like, that light bulb over there can promote sex trafficking if that's what you want to do. But, but you, I understand the point. Like, yeah. I won't refute that. I one. don't really feel like that was necessary for his uh, mm-hmm. church appearance, but... No, okay. it's, it's, all, it's all a money grab. And what, that's the thing. People okay. don't realize this is nothing but a money grab. This is nothing but just to recuperate all the money he lost from his actual real fans that fucked with him. I like you said recuperate and not recoup. No, I, I like actually, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fourth point. Yeah. Christians are beaten into submission against sharing their faith. Christians are fucking morons what they are at times. Fair, but I don't, I'm not afraid to tell anybody I believe in God. No, no, I, no. I was just saying, like, yeah. and I believe too, but I'll definitely tell, like, you know, some some of these spiritual people, like, you're fucking full of shit, you're a fucking moron, and only because of the fact that, okay, so so this person I, I used to rock with at my old job, her mother, verbally abused by her husband, mm-hmm. but they're very much in the church. She don't believe in divorce and don't want to leave him, and he said some of the most and the shit she would tell me, some of those racist fucking shit I ever heard. Like, I like at, once I heard that shit, I, I didn't fuck with him. And I guess technically that was like her okay. stepdad and shit. But I was like, no, like I, I'm not fucking with this guy. Like, and you know, but no, the guy, no, I said, fuck that bullshit. You know, God ain't here right now to be going to this bullshit. Like, God ain't ever dealt with no racist bullshit. Like, fuck that. Nobody like, ever called God a coon. Probably no, not. No, nobody ever called probably God a dirty Mexican stuff. either. Probably some other stuff. Could or red skin. <laughs> Could you imagine somebody so mad at, at their situation they call God a coon? Like wow, <laughs> and why was that what you called him? <laughs> you got to be on some racist shit. Um, his last point, mm-hmm. Kanye's, was that the devil stole all the good artists. I mean, well, they didn't take him apparently. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Can you can you can take Kanye? Bring him back. Um, no child left behind. The devil. No, I think there, there are tons of like <laughs> Kirk Franklin. We grew up with Kirk Franklin. Yes. Yeah, you know Fred mm-hmm. Hammond, like. Mary Mary, like no, you're you, no. That's Luther just not Vandross, true. Big Luther. Kirk is still out here Listen, talking I'm about this and dedicated I'm to. Just say, I, I don't know Luther Vandross's faith. When he said he was dancing with his father, he wasn't talking about his dad. That's all I got. Shout out to shout out to our man Chris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, hey, but no, um, yeah, no. I don't think the devil has all the good artists. No, Con- there's plenty of Connie's good- is definitely a money grab, and anybody who. If you fuck with him like that, like let's talk about brought- Joel Osteen. 
What a fucking con artist. I don't fucking I hate I, I hate Joel I really Osteen. Despise Joel him. Osteen said when you dress nice and you got a nice car and your hair done nice God and you smiles. look good. Yeah, God smiles. Yeah, God smiles. I mean He's also the same person that wouldn't let people in his church when the city was flooded. Mm-hmm. So fuck he could, him. He could literally yeah. stop people from dying. Yeah. And he chose not to. So Joel Osteen could I think the world would be, would be better off if he wasn't preaching the uh what do they call it hustler preacher no well not even a hustler preacher that's what he is yeah but the uh the, the mini- millions of people well, no, that but come like the ministry of prosperity yes if Which is that's gross. not what he was pushing i think the world would be better off I but think i think it, that's if what he, he just is. wasn't preaching in general the world might be Agreed. a better place yeah. um we decided pre-show we're not really getting into politics this week yeah what i that. do want to talk about Meg, did you get to read the Ellen James story? I did. Okay. So I read it. For anybody who doesn't know, and, and, and you know, as somebody who, you know, moonlights in journalism, like I try to appreciate my black journalists and my black creators. Mm-hmm. Like I really want them to do well. We all do. I mean, it could still happen. Um, I don't know what the future holds for me, but I was very much in line to marry a woman who was not black. Like, that was in the pipeline. And it's probably going to happen, whether it's with her or not, because we're not going to get into that. Fair. Maybe later in Fair. the topic. <laughs> but um, I think this is important. Mm-hmm. One thing that I established to her father very early on is that I wasn't no bitch. <laughs> um, and, and Peanut knows the entire story. Yeah, but it was really like, okay, I understand that you might have hangups about me because of the color of my skin, mm-hmm. and won't hesitate to do it. So I, I feel like as long as you know that, you and I can share a space, and there won't be any confusion, right? Because you have your beliefs. Um, because I can't be emotionally invested in a person and let those emotions make me less assertive in a situation where I need to establish my presence. I right? can also say for the record that uh, um, but we, you know, we we. Had I was to have there when that happened. The most important thing we had to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Ellen James White, um, content creator, um, every Thanksgiving, he deactivates his Twitter for about two weeks. And why does he deactivate his Twitter? Because he went to his white wife's house for Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. and was let known that he would not be able to eat Thanksgiving dinner in the house. So he went to his car and was given a plate and he seasoned that plate with his tears. Like a dumbass. Because I would have yeah. drove the fuck off. Yep. So, I would have drove off and divorced and bye. <laughs> guys, I... And found it, my I, real I, queen. I feel bad that it's a fun story. Mm-hmm. But it is a fun story. Because, I mean, I believe in love. I think love's a very real thing. I don't think... Loving and have, have to, me put up with racism. You should have to sacrifice your dignity. Exactly. And your common sense. Exactly. To care about somebody. Yep. We, at the very least... We're not eating Thanksgiving dinner at that house. Oh, you're a bitch ass is coming with me, motherfucker. What you think? Baby, let's go. (laughs) We're leaving. Yeah. Um, But he deactivated it because we ride on his ass every single Thanksgiving. I may have made the joke that (laughs) she had to throw him dinner rolls down from the upstairs window (laughs) when his plate finished. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) And it wasn't like they just met. It was his wife. That's crazy. Can you imagine? Like, again, no. this is why. I wouldn't marry anybody like that. This is why it's important. Exactly. Well, sure. This is why it's important that you can't say stuff like, oh, 
Elon's the joke just horny was as fuck. funny three years or thirty years ago. Why mm-hmm. isn't it funny now? Because niggas are still racist today. They still and don't want the house nigger. You gotta, the table. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta shut them down now. <laughs> like <laughs> you, the world would be a better There's place. An edit. <laughs> The world would be a better place <laughs> if black people just told white people what the fuck they wasn't going to do. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know that family specifically. I feel We know like, enough. But exactly. Know. But I'm gonna t- what happened to me, though? Yeah. I had that conversation with that man, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And guess what happened the next time I saw him? What happened? It was daps and hugs. Hey, how you doing? I was, no. Mm-mm. Like, I'm not, we're not cool. But. The fact that I stated where I was coming from had made him have to adjust. He's like, oh, he's not taking no shit off me and we're going to be in the same space. And most importantly, you weren't going anywhere at that time. So it's like accept it or make your life hard. It's like, yo, you're going to be the one that's mad. Yeah. It's not going to be me. Yeah. So I I think that, and again, again, not knowing his specific situation. One, you never show up to that shit. I even had to tell her, like, back in the day, like, yo, um, she was like, oh, um, how about we go to my parents' house for dinner? I was like, no. I was like, and I, I literally said it. I was like, yo, like, you don't show up to an away game without your starters. And she was like, you're equating this to a football game? Yes. Yes, I actually am. I'm not going <laughs> into no situation where I'm not comfortable, where somebody can control my situation when they've established that they don't like me because of something I can't control. You feel me? Yeah. Like, and, and, and Meg, I haven't told you, it wasn't like, um, I don't know how people will react. And it wasn't that. It was, he's going to leave you with two kids and beat you. So he went there. That's why my response was as strong as it was. Mm-hmm. Because what? Like I'm I'm somebody who's never hit a woman, number one. I'm somebody with no children, number two. So I, I also feel like it's weird because he is in an interracial relationship. Funny how that is works. Even more. So, <laughs> and to bring this story back around, um, the silver lining, and it's not actually silver lining, it's more like aluminum lining, was that one thing he stated super strongly was how black women held him down in that moment and let him know that everything was going to be okay. But yet, and he could power he's through. He's married to a white woman. That's crazy. <laughs> well, if, well, he's married to a woman who did not have the same amount of vitriol and fervor and steadfastness in his situation. She was in there eating that dry ass stuffing <laughs> while he was in, stuffing, while not, he was, dressing, not because dressing. White people make while, stuffing. While he was out there in the goddamn <laughs> in the styrofoam with the eight different holes in it to where they could put the mac and cheese in one. And he probably didn't get shit one. on his plate. And nigga was there three for items. The he butt got end three of the turkey. <laughs> the turkey was dry as shit with a cup of juice. So. Let's also talk about that one person who had that long ass thread about Elon James. Uh, what is, what oh, his name is? Oh, so yeah. one of the people in the thread mm-hmm. about how terrible he was mm-hmm. <laughs> was saying nothing about Thanksgiving, but Girl. about how um, they worked for him mm-hmm. and they created a lot of content for him that he sold for money. They never saw a dollar off of. And he at one point um, in the midst of an argument commented on the fact that she was a sex worker. And how that had a negative impact on her being able to be taken seriously. <sighs> Maybe we should just not fuck with him. That, and at the same time, with her, sucker. Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody that works free. Because again, hold on, I'll say this. One of your heroes taught me the best lesson in life. If you're good at something, you don't you do, do it for, it for free. free. Yeah. Because again... I don't coach football for free, and I'm mm. damn good at it, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't coach it for free. Almost. And no, even the big <laughs> It feels like it for free, yeah, sometimes, even, but and even I don't do it for free. I get paid was, for it, Yeah, even and, and, though and, when you do the hours, no, the hours. And, and seriously, yeah. think about the amount of content I've created for free. Mm-hmm. But it was always with the idea that I know that I can turn this into more. 
because we turned it into merchandise. Mm-hmm. We turned that's it that, into like you definitely getting your money somewhere like, somehow. No, that's the thing. Like we we really did. Like it wasn't like oh do this for us and it'll boost your signal. It was like no, like I'm doing this, but I'm also I get to plug the other things I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Right. I get to make things, and I there's no rules against me advertising what I'm doing. Yeah. So we we established that early on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, she's. I'm, I can't even say she's a sucker though, because you you haven't done this. And what I mean is, like, your face on camera is gonna be funny right now. But there's a yo. Everybody thinks that they're one article away. Everybody thinks they're one tweet away. They all really do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I even said a thing today. Somebody said, "What is the the biggest?" fallacy or lie stop making that face about twitter followers and i said thinking that your twitter followers are your customers is the worst thing you can do that one person found out we talked about a couple months ago mm. from uh instagram that and one girl and we talked yep. about yo your twitter like your social media followers are not your customers exactly as soon as you think that that's when you get disappointed yep there are people who just like to look at you or or read your tweets like that's, yeah. She found out really quick that uh, she, 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 she had like forty thousand followers. And that bitch sold three T-shirts. Yep. All right, like it sucks, but it lets you know, like that's the way the game goes. Like, in your place, but I mean, like he's over there. Shit. He's over there charging people fifteen dollars a month to listen to a fucking podcast. Yeah, and it's just not even. That and fine. she didn't get it. And she didn't get a fucking dime out of it. And sucker. And and. <laughs> nigga eats his Thanksgiving food in the car in the back of a Celica. <laughs> what a guys, puss. guys, let's end it like this. Mm-hmm. This will come out Monday. Thanksgiving's Thursday. Mm-hmm. Peanut, tell me three things you're thankful for this year. <laughs> Fantastic, Meg. Three things you're thankful for. Um, potential sugar daddies, alcohol, okay, and single men that drive Teslas. So if there Tesla's. any of those out there. Let me know. I instantly get off to a Tesla, especially the SUV. I'm, <laughs> what am I thankful for? He's going to give please. us a serious fucking answer. No, yeah, no, no. I mean, Sentimental. Kind of, I'm thankful for Banner. I knew he was going to say that. I'm thankful for Banner. Um, got to spend a day with my puppy, and he's stellar. He's um, nuts. I also got to spend half the day with him, and he's shout fucking out to Astro. crazy. Um, I'm thankful for women's pro wrestling. I, no, it, you saw me last night. I was hype over that shit. I will literally never watch wrestling again because of Cameron. So, um, and I'm people like Cameron for, really ruin wrestling for people. Yes, yeah. I'm thankful for brown women over 140 pounds. He's a liar, but we'll go with it. No, he's not a liar. He really likes fat bitches. It's, I know he loves fat bitches, <laughs> but they're usually not brown. <laughs> Peanut knows True. the vibe. You, hey, don't play me. Don't play me. Oh no, no. Well, mm. don't play, okay, no, okay, don't play me. Okay. Out. They have their, a, their, their ethnicity is brown, but their skin tone may not be brown. Correct. Okay, yeah, that's they're true. on the vanilla that, side. Yeah, of the that I will say that. It's the South Congress podcast, episode ninety. Um, before we get out of here, uh huh, this will drop on a Monday, so we are two and a half weeks away from my birthday party. True. December? If any of y'all in Texas that are followers, please yeah. come through. Uh, Craig, again, if you're listening, fly in. You can stay at my place, dog. December fourteenth, eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. Texas Toy Museum, downtown Austin, Texas. And the attire is bad bitches only. So if you come looking trash, I will personally dismiss you. It might be a jammy jam. So tell Cam it needs to be a jammy jam it's like not, house party. It's not going to be a jammy jam because I already be. bought my outfit. So And take that, <laughs> take that shit back. Me and Cam are Send it, send it, he send it back to Amazon. It. Who gives a shit? I didn't buy shit from Amazon. I don't know. Jim Cornette should not have been fired, but fuck Jim Cornette. It's the South Congress Podcast, episode 90. My name is Cameron. And I'm Peanut. And I'm Megan. And we're out. Bye.